Well, hello everybody, I have here a new review for you. This is a complete Jewish study Bible uh, that I got from uh, our friends in Henriksen Bibles. And uh, they sent this copy uh, for review and uh, I just would like to show you this great edition of the Bible. Now, it is a Messianic translation um, that has been around for a while, the complete Jewish Bible, but this is the edition that they have put together uh, for Bible study with insights um, for Jews and Christians alike. And what this uh, study Bible does is uh, it brings up uh, the Jewishness of God's Word uh, to the modern reader. Uh, sometimes we can forget that uh, what we are actually reading is a Jewish book. Uh, it's not a Baptist or a Pentecostal or a Methodist or you name it, any of those uh, denominations that you may uh, be part of. But uh, it's actually a Jewish book written by Jewish authors inspired by the Holy Spirit. So sometimes uh, it's good and it's helpful to understand the background, uh, the culture uh, of uh, the people living in the time of uh, the Bible. So this is uh, what I believe this Bible is trying to accomplish. As you can see right here, it, it, it tells us basically that it develops a deeper understanding of the Bible or the Bible's Jewish heritage. Uh, it comes with key features, over 100 articles, categorized into 12 themes uh, they run throughout the, the Bible covering topics such as uh, Jewish customs, Messianic prophecy, the names of God, Shabbat, the Torah or Torah as I should be pronounced, the Torah and more. Uh, over 30 uh, additional topic articles uh, and uh, you can see here there's a lot of a lot of things here that uh, could be really, really, really eye-opening uh, for today's reader. Let's take a look at the cover. The cover is a hardback. It is smite sewn, which means the, the, the spine is, is sewn and uh, not just glued, which it will make this Bible to last uh, for a long period of time. It comes with two thin but nice navy blue ribbons. Okay, and it comes with a uh, headbands in white and blue. I like that color too. The design of the cover is, is pretty cool, uh, colorful and uh, very uh, tasteful as well, as you can see. And by the way, I'm going to show you right here. This is the ISBN. All right. This one says it's actually printed in Italy. Now, uh, the size of this Bible is. Uh, it's not small, but I can say it's not the largest study Bible I've, I have seen. Okay, so this is nine and a half tall by six and a half wide, and it's around one and three quarters. That's the measurements. It's a hardback, as you can see. Okay, it's uh, paste down, uh, white paper, cardstock. And we have in the beginning one, two, and three blank pages, and the presentation page, again with a lovely design around uh, the frame right here. And we've got Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp for my foot and light on my path. So here is a reminder that this is indeed the complete Jewish Bible. All right, and this is done by Hendri Hendrickson Bibles and in collaboration with Messianic Jewish Publishers and Resources. Here we have that uh, it's printed in Italy again. Uh, the paper is nice, it's, it's not too thick, it's not too thick, but it, look, it seems to me dense, okay? Uh, this could be, I, mm, probably around 32 GSM, something like this. Okay, and we have here these other options in hardcover, as the one we have today. Uh, blue, FlexiSoft, 
and you can get this in black genuine calfskin leather too all right so you can have this bible and get this bible in a nice leather cover all right the text of this bible is the complete jewish bible text uh, that was translated uh, by david stern uh, you may have heard of him and uh, actually i'm just gonna show you i have here this is the actual complete jewish bible an english version by david stern and uh, as you can see it's similar format in paragraph and uh, this is the text that this uh, study bible is using but obviously with the uh, study articles and this is a, a typical uh, prayer a messianic prayer uh, in the Hebrew uh, language and in English uh, praised are you Adonai our God King of the universe who gives the Torah of truth and the good news of salvation to his people Israel and to all the peoples through his son Yeshua the Messiah our Lord so as you can see uh, this Bible is going to use uh, uh, transliterations of the Hebrew rather than translation in the names for example instead of Jesus which would be the Greek transliteration of the Hebrew Yeshua is translated as or transliterated as Yeshua which means salvation in Hebrew and uh, we have here the table of contents now I can't go through every single detail because this this is packed down with great information and articles but I want to show you uh, an overall look of this amazing edition so we have the books of the Tanakh Tanakh is basically the acronym uh, uh, from the Hebrew uh, that basically means the Torah the writings and the prophets which in Christianity you may know as uh, the Old Testament so that's what Tanakh means and it's listed in Christian Old Testament order books of the Bible listed in alphabetical order abbreviations now here we have Mishnah Talmud and other Jewish works why is that relevant let's say for a Christian because although we as believers in Yeshua or Jesus the Messiah we don't actually uh, believe that these books are inspired by God but these books actually give uh, a great historical and con contextual uh, frame to what we are reading in the Bible which is the Word of God so to have that there uh, uh, I think it's great I am Jewish I understand why we have this here I myself do not consider the mission of the Talmud as inspired by God or even uh, to be uh, considered something that we need to abide by but I do I appreciate the insight and, uh, and the value historical value and even some it can bring sometimes light to what we read in the scripture because there are certain things that uh, uh, the Jewish people would do or we keep during the time of Jesus that are not or is not reflect or is not uh, uh, clearly uh, stated in the New Testament but if you read certain articles from the Mishnah or the Talmud you can understand why they were doing what they were doing so again it's part it was part and it is part of the culture the Jewish culture and to understand certain things better I think it is great to have that there again don't let that retract you from getting this Bible because again it's not gonna be uh, uh, like uh, a doctrine taught from these books on the contrary it's going to give some light and insight of what we believe the Bible is teaching us and uh, uh, basically it's just a bit of a uh, background and culture and so on so let's keep going so we have now here the introductions to the study Bible introductions to the actual uh, complete Jewish Bible which is uh, the text itself of the, of the scripture uh, books of the Bible by section so here we have the teaching or the law called Torah what uh, many people will look, we, under, we know by the Pentateuch or the five books of Moses then we have here uh, the prophets okay their writings and the good news of Yeshua the Messiah as reported by we have, we have here the Gospels uh, 
the acts of the emissaries of Yeshua the Messiah that would be what we understand as apostles the epistles or letters uh, we go here some messianic letters like uh, messianic Jews such as Hebrews or uh, Yaakov which is James in English don't know why that ever happened uh, because Yaakov we have a name in English for Yaakov which is Jacob I don't know how Jacob became James well leave it at that maybe you can post something on the comment section and, and enlighten me how that ever uh, came to be but it's truly something that surprises me Yaakov is Jacob James well I cannot tell you anyway then we got um, uh, the revelation of Yeshua the Messiah to Yohanan uh, which is uh, John in English um, what this Bible is going to do is it's going to bring the actual name, Hebrew names of the people of the Bible uh, in the majority of, uh, of uh, texts. And that is going gonna, is gonna to do two things. One, it's going to teach you the real names of the people of the Bible. And two, it's going to make you connect with the people of the Bible. Because when we understand that these people were not called Matthew, but rather Matiyahu, we can actually feel that this guy is actually Jewish, uh, not so much like um, Baptist from England or a Pentecostal from the United States. Then we have here the appendix, the glossary of the Hebrew words with pronunciation into English. We got glossary of English words into Hebrew with pronunciation too, uh, and English of Tanakh passages cited in the Brit Hadasha. Uh, Brit Hadasha uh, or Hadasha is the New Covenant. That's what that means in Hebrew. That uh, Brit is, is covenant or cut or um, Hadasha basically means uh, a fresh, new, renewed, um, brand new. Uh, uh, it, oh, it means all of that. And as you can see, this is uh, packed up with information. Um, here we have the books of the Tanakh, uh, the, Old, the Old Testament, books of the Bible in total. This is in alphabetical order. Here we have abbreviations from the Old Testament and the New Testament, uh, the Tanakh and the Brit Hadasha. And here we have uh, an inf information about the Mishnah, the Talmud, and other works uh, that uh, will give us some contextual information to better understand what was going on in the times of, uh, uh, for example, Jesus, the Messiah, Yeshua. Um, We have here other rabbinic works, suggestion, suggested readings, and here we have uh, also information about the Mishnah, the Talmud, Targum texts, and other rabbinic works. That's an introduction right here, features unique to the complete Jewish Bible. So we have, for example, we have a new uh, book introductions, we will have study notes, we're going to have a list of contributors. We have colorful maps. We're going to have topical articles like this one. We're going to have uh, theme articles. And uh, as you can see, and also uh, cultural or scriptural interpretations. Okay, in this case, we have a, a, an anti Jewish scriptural interpretation. Uh, this Bible is great with that because it's going to, to uh, enlighten some texts or some uh, that traditional. Uh, Christianity may have misunderstood for a lack of understanding of the context and also uh, the cultural background and uh, I think this Bible does a great job uh, fixing such problems now we have here excellent features also like uh, the covenants Jewish customs Jewish gentle relations messianic prophecy the names of God the Sabbath or Shabbat Salvation and Atonement and the Holy Days of Israel. I like to say that the Holy Days are not of Israel. I think the Holy Days are of God. And God shared those Holy Days with the people of God, His people, uh, uh, to uh, basically meet with them and have a, what we call Modim, or in Hebrew that means appointed times. So basically, these are dates that the, the Lord uh, gave to His people so that we can have these appointed times and many of them 
uh, are deep and profound in in, in meaning and uh, they are actually directed to Bible prophecy. Uh, all these feasts have a prophetic fulfillment. So uh, they are more than meets the eye, let's say. And uh, I think this is great to have the land of Israel, the Torah, or uh, the five books of Moses, the Pentateuch, and Tabernacle of Mishkan. So we have yet introduction. Uh, to the complete Jewish Bible. It's a big introduction. Plenty of information here. Translators, uh, the purpose of the version, um, what about the Messianic community, what about the New Testament and Yeshua, uh, the Torah, the prophets. It's great to, to have a look at this, the Gospels, the letters of the Apostles, or Emissaries as is translated in this version. Uh, revelation great information you won't be disappointed with this no. now me being a messianic jew i have to say uh, um, i can agree most most with most of the content of this uh, edition this bible story i may not agree 100 percent with every single uh, commentary uh, i may have my own understanding and views obviously based on not only uh, the scripture but also on my own research and um, uh, an understanding and revelation on, on the scripture but nevertheless I really really recommend this this Bible uh, like any other study Bible you may have uh, certain things or commentaries done by men that you may disagree too not only with this edition but with any study Bible that you may come across so let's have a look it was uh, gonna keep moving forward because it is huge the amount of uh, uh, articles that you may find in this Bible uh, for example here synagogue usage of the complete Jewish Bible that is great to have their uh, pronunciations glossaries here also okay so we have here a typical introduction in this case we have a very sheet which is Genesis the beginning that's what the the mean the meaning of Bereshit is that's the meaning of Bereshit Genesis is a Greek word that means source origin or beginning taken from the opening phrase in the beginning Bereshit in Hebrew Genesis is indeed the book of beginnings from the creation of the universe through the patriarchal era of Abraham Isaac and Yaakov Abraham Isaac and Jacob they got it right here you see as I said to you before Yaakov is Jacob not James well we understand who James is now because he's been there forever but uh, if we want to be truthful to basically translating from Hebrew into English we should be consistent and translate Yaakov as Jacob not James but that's just my personal uh, two cents on that one <laughs> anyway here we have the layout of this Bible now as you can see this page has plenty of color around the the, the, the margin if you, if you flip the page you still gonna see some show through it's not uh, uh, too distracting for me I have to say I'm not uh, I can still go focus on the on the main text you know what I mean and as you can see right here we're gonna have uh, the single column paragraph format with blue highlights on chapters titles books and the Hebrew trans uh, original transliteration okay now we have down the bottom some commentary not all pages we have this but that's the case here also with blue highlights then we have for example here an article about the names of God in this case Elohim Elohim or Elohim is from Genesis 1 1 and I think this is articles that you're gonna enjoy a lot here's another one uh, Messianic prophecy in the beginning so from the very beginning this is gonna give you all this information great information and uh, obviously uh, uh, as a Messianic Jewish edition uh, it focuses on the person of Jesus of Yeshua our Messiah 
So here's Messianic prophecy from Genesis. A great article. Then here we have uh, the actual uh, first uh, account in the whole Bible that talks about the Sabbath day or Shabbat, which is at creation. So from creation, we're given the the actual text where God is going to set apart or mm, sanctify or uh, made holy uh, uh, out of the seven days of creation. So here we have a nice and neat uh, uh, colorful uh, article about this issue, this matter, this subject. Now here we have salvation and atonement. So again, the Jewishness of this book is 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 a given is a Jewish book but understanding the actual context and and the, uh, uh, is great it's great it's gonna help you a lot and uh, all these articles are gonna do the job for you and it's gonna move on so here's a good example of uh, a commentary based on Jewish mindset Jewish context uh, for example, in Acts chapter 10, we're talking about Peter or Kepha, which is uh, uh, the Hebrew uh, for, for Peter, or as, as uh, it says here, or Shimon, which was his real name. So uh, we read about the story of Peter having this vision of animals coming from heaven, unclean animals, and the Lord telling him to kill and eat. So, Many, many uh, today in Christianity think that uh, what that means is that uh, God allows now uh, believers to eat any animal, whatever it is. But is that actually the meaning of the vision? Well, let's take a the con let's take a look at the context. Look what it says here. It says Kepha was still puzzling over the meaning of the vision he had seen. Had God reversed the, the precepts of the Torah by making that which is unclean to be clean, uh, what we say kosher? This is the interpretation of many commentators to this day. Although Kepha in verse 28 says, God has shown me not to call any person common or unclean. So the vision here is about people and not food. So here we go. Uh, uh, we have Peter here refusing to eat something that he knew it was forbidden by God. Yet we hear many people saying the contrary that uh, uh, he should have eaten from from that. Uh, but he knew it was not God's will. He knew very well the commandments of God. So his his uh, 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 mind was confused about what the meaning would be because he understood it couldn't mean that God now made okay to eat a rat or to eat a camel okay so here is a perfect uh, uh, let's say commentary on a Jewish mindset from a Jewish per perspective of what the Jewish believers would have uh, actually understood or thought in within the context that's that's a nice that's a nice commentary I agree with that I like it and uh, is very very neat so things like that where you may agree or disagree uh, that is okay I also agree with other uh, uh, study Bibles, but as I also disagree with some certain commentaries on those same Bibles. So it's okay to agree to disagree, uh, but it's fine also to take another angle and look at uh, different uh, opinions and context, especially when it comes from the actual biblical context, which is what we want. In this case, we have here Jewish customs, uh, relevance of circumcision, in the New Testament that is also a very uh, um, good topic to look at and uh, if we go to the back of the book we, ha we have uh, an amazing glossary right here we go of Hebrew words with pronunciation into English All right and uh, very readable font I think this is at least 10 or 11 for example here we have uh, Mashiach which is what we understand to be Messiah in English and uh, from the Greek Christ literally anointed an anointed one 
transliterated into English as Messiah, equivalent to the Greek Christos, which also means anointed and comes into English as Christ. So uh, when we say Christ, we're actually meaning Messiah, which is the Hebrew Mashiach. So we have the whole, uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, spectrum uh, of words and meanings uh, coming back to the root of the uh, original, uh, which wouldn't be Christ, because that would be uh, the transliteration into the Greek. It would actually be Mashiach in the Hebrew, Messiah in English. We have here the index of the Tanakh passages cited in the Brih Hadashah. Uh, that would be the New Covenant, uh, properly, because Brit is not Testament, it's actually Covenant. So we're talking about First Covenant and the New Covenant. Uh, and in your Bible you will find it as the Old Testament and the New Testament. That will be the equivalence. Plenty of information here. Shabbat scriptures reading or parashot. Topic articles, indices, names of God, Shabbat or Shabbat, Shabbat or Sabbath. Uh, salvation and atonement, the holy days, um, historical backgrounds, traditional Jewish observance, prophetic fulfillment, very important. Some of those feasts are still to be fulfilled by the Lord and uh, they will come to pass in prophecy as they did in the beginning when he came uh, to this world and then he fulfilled uh, Passover, he fulfilled first fruits and then when the Holy Spirit it was uh, sent to us in Pentecost or Shavuot, the Feast of uh, Weeks. And uh, those are the feasts that we can tell prophetically have come already to pass. But we still have uh, the, the other feasts. In, in this, uh, that were, those were from spring, but we have also the ones from uh, the dawn or autumn. And uh, we're talking about Yom Kippur, we're talking about uh, the Feast uh, of the Day of uh, Trumpets, we're talking about Tabernacles, and those are, uh, we're still waiting for, for Jesus Yeshua, the Messiah, to, to fulfill those. So if you think that's nothing to do with you, think again, because those are going to be uh, prophetic fulfillments, and Bible prophecy that are going to affect us all, the whole world will be affected by them. So, even in the, if you read the, the prophets, you will find that uh, when the Lord returns, when Messiah comes, uh, we will have to keep some of those festivals uh, according to the prophets. From all nations, people will come to learn the ways of the Lord, the, the, the law will come forth from Zion, and the Lord says that uh, we have to go and, and celebrate, for example, the Feast of Tabernacles. And for those who refuse to do that, to go up to Jerusalem, uh, the prophet says that the Lord himself, uh, Jesus, the Messiah, will actually uh, uh, punish those with no rain in their land. So, uh, there's something to think about. Anyway, uh, we have here biographies of rabbis and sages that, uh, again, these are insights, okay? This is not uh, uh, for you to think you need to obey or to do this is for you to learn to understand context to know what uh, uh, the Jewish people have uh, believed and learned and so on and uh, why the, the apostles may have a problem with certain things in the New Testament like Peter had why he didn't want to uh, get involved with uh, Gentiles and the Lord had to deal with them well when we know about these things we can understand why Peter had that issue. And uh, we have here work cited and further readings uh, about the translator, geography. Okay, so we call the maps here. This is the geography of the land of Israel, the kingdoms, the conquest after the Exodus. Uh, we have here um, the land of Israel in the first century. We have map here of the Roman Empire. So get that closer a little bit so you can take a look, closer look. 
Now this is this is thick uh, glossy paper. I know some people are not so fond of it, but I, I think it's nice. It's not too shiny, uh, but it's you can feel it's it's uh, thick um, glossy paper. Uh, very colorful and, and nicely done. Uh, very easy to read. I like this. And here we have uh, the map of the Jewish and Christian communities in the late antiquity. Okay, here we go. That's Israel there, there and this is all the different areas. Now, uh, the Hebrews, as you know, uh, the ten tribes of, of Israel in the north were scattered among all the nations. But also the Jewish people, besides the Hebrews, came to uh, what we know of by the name of Spain. And uh, But before Hispania was named, the name was Iberia or Iberia. Iberia comes from the uh, root of Ibrim, which is Hebrew in the Hebrew language. So we understand that uh, uh, we have not only Jewish roots, but also Hebrew roots in the Spanish peninsula. And from there, many Jews of the century, especially with the Spanish Inquisition, had to flee to North Africa and South America uh, and so on. And, and our Jewish brothers and sisters from the north of Europe, they probably went to North America and so on. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, I believe this is a, a different study Bible that you probably are used to. Uh, you may uh, have uh, great insights here and, and, and open your mind uh, to, to the actual context of the scripture. Uh, the commentaries are, I believe, uh, very good. I'm not 100% uh, in agreement with everything that the commentaries may actually say. Uh, but I can agree probably with 95% of everything here like I probably do with any other uh, study Bible like the ESV I love it and uh, um, for example the archaeology study Bible or let's say the NKJB study Bible they all have excellent excellent commentaries but there are some that I would not uh, agree either and that is also okay we can agree to disagree and love each other uh, we are brothers in, in the Lord and uh, Jesus, Yeshua the Messiah has made one new man from two peoples he created the one new man so I hope this is going to bless you uh, I encourage you to get it uh, you will have uh, fun getting into the uh, deep and, and, and the depth of the scripture uh, and uh, learn a little bit more of the author's uh, context and uh, background uh, to bring some light to some some uh, passages that I think they're going to amaze you. So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed my review. And uh, one thing I want to say is the Lord bless you and keep you. And hopefully we'll see you again in a new uh, review or a Bible review or Rebind. But until then, Shalom Shalom.